good. All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the July 13th, 2017 meeting of the Delaware County Board of Commissioners. If everyone would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, thank you very much. I'm Jeff Benton, President of the Board. To my left is uh, Vice President Gary Merrill. To my right is fellow Commissioner Barb Lewis. And our County Administrator, Farzana Med. And our clerk today is Sarah DeMilla. And we will start. Resolution number 17-727. In the matter of approving the electronic record of proceedings from regular meeting held July 10th, 2017. Hello. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-727. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Bitt. Aye. They have no elected or public comment today. Resolution number 17-728. In the matter of approving purchase orders, then now certificates and payments of warrants and batch number CMA PR 0712. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-728. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Bitt. Aye. Resolution dash, sorry, resolution number 17-729 in the matter of approving travel expense requests. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-729. Mr. Bitten. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Resolution number 17-730 in the matter of acknowledging receipt of annexation petition from the agent for the petitioner, Eugene Hollins, law director of the City of Powell, requesting the annexation of 1.186 acres of land in Liberty Township to the City of Powell. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-730. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-731. In the matter of accepting the award for the Department of Youth Services for competitive reclaim funding for Delaware County Juvenile and Probate Court. So moved. Second. Discussion. Judge? Good morning. The judge. Wow. Here comes the judge. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Hamanowski, I'm the uh, probate juvenile judge here in uh, Delaware County. I'm very happy to be with you here this morning, uh, and hopefully we'll keep, your, keep you on this pace you've got uh, um, set here. But uh, just a little bit of background about this grant. Uh, juvenile courts in Ohio receive a number of grants from the state uh, through the Ohio Department of Youth Services. One of those is the state's base grant, uh, which is based solely on population. Uh, another is the DYS Reclaim Grant, uh, which intends to um, fund juvenile court programming to allow kids to stay in the local community uh, and not to be sent to Department of Youth Services facilities, essentially the juvenile equivalent of the adult prison system. Several years ago, uh, the Department of Youth Services set up a competitive um, grant system. Um, in addition to those uh, two grants. And this competitive grant system allows counties to uh, apply for uh, additional grant monies to run individualized programs. Uh, the state has put a much stricter uh, set of guidelines in for these programs. They must be uh, programs that have been shown to work um, by having their results studied uh, in other locations. They must be based on um, specific uh, programming that's been designed uh, by experts working in the field. Uh, this year, we decided to go after a pretty substantial uh, grant in that process. Uh, the total uh, over three years is uh, just in excess. Well, you've got it in your um, uh, materials is $254,000. There's a um, $17,000 um, additional amount that can be awarded as we go forward, which would actually bring the total amount to $272,000 um, over the course of the three years, though what you're approving today is the, uh, is the base 254. Uh, this may be, uh, this I think is, the largest individual grant um, we uh, will have ever received um, <coughs> at the court outside of the uh, DYS Reclaim um, grant that we get on an annual basis. Uh, too often we find ourselves in situations where uh, we're dealing with 16 and 17 year olds who have been um, in high stress, high risk um, environments their entire lives. Uh, and by the time we see them, by the time they commit offenses that are serious enough that they come to us, um, we're dealing with a substantial amount of uh, years and, and years of uh, troublesome behavior that we're now just seeing for the first time. Uh, and the uh, you know, simple uh, terms of ordering someone to do community service or putting someone on probation um, are not necessarily uh, going to be sufficient in those cases. 
We're very pleased that this uh, grant is going to allow us a number of things. First of all, um, to train uh, all of our um, probation staff in what's called EPICS, Effective Practices in Community um, Supervision, um, as well as uh, another program called the Carry Guides, um, which are uh, tools um, to affect exactly that kind of behavioral um, change uh, in those kinds of cases. In addition, um, this grant is going to allow us to expand a, uh, an intensive family advocate program uh, that we have already begun to utilize to try and reduce uh, detention bed days uh, into all of these uh, high-risk probation cases. So it's uh, $94,000 uh, in change over the first year, $88,000 in the second year, $89,500 in the third year, and I'm sure that you will all be very pleased to hear that there is a zero local match uh, to go along with this grant, so I'm not asking asking you for any money today uh, <laughs> just to approve this money coming in. And all the better, I'm asking you for this money just a few days before the start of uh, probation and parole supervision week, uh, which is next week, and which we'll be recognizing our uh, great probation officers who do this work already. Good, yeah. good. Thank why, you. why do you think we, we got this grant? Why do you think we won? Um, I'll give you the easy answer I want to give you, because we're awesome. No. Uh, uh, I will tell you that I think we put together a um, unique combination of these programs. Um, so what we did is we went out and found, uh, and, and I, the, words, the phrase is cliché, so I tried to avoid using it earlier, evidence-based. Um, it's one of those terms that gets thrown around so much that it begins to lose its value. But what it means here in this setting is we, we went out and found programs that have been designed by um, universities that have been designed by researchers in these areas and that have been implemented in other places and shown to work. And then we combine them in ways along with the intensive family advocate that really is sort of um, a program that, that we've uh, championed um, in a way that the Department of Youth Services hadn't seen before. Uh, and I think they looked at the combination of those programs together and thought this is something that's got an excellent chance of working. Uh, and that's likely why we were successful here. How many counties applied and how many counties received? That I don't know offhand. Sure. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't have that information uh, for you. I know that uh, in the past, um, when we've gone after competitive reclaim grants, it's often fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars for small individual programs. This was a pretty big bite of the apple for us, mm -hmm. uh, and we were obviously very, very excited yes. uh, mm -hmm. to receive it. Boy, <clears throat> to your great credit. Yeah, to everyone. But not mine, which is my staff's great credit. Staff, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. Yes. Um, now, what is, I, I have to ask for a okay. uh, distinction between uh, reclaim funding and competitive reclaim. Sure. Um, I'm going to get into weeds here a little bit, but I'll do it as quickly okay. as I can. So, reclaim is first DOS based grant. DOS based grant is adjusted every 10 years based on the decennial census population and what amount you get holds for that 10 years unless the base funding amount is changed by the state legislature. We claim in itself, uh, and there are days I can tell you what the acronym, all the letters to the acronym mean, today is not one of them. Uh, uh, what's it? You've got it here, good. Well, then you can put it in the record uh, in, in just a moment. But. Uh, uh, Reclaim uh, is a rolling formula. So there is a base amount of uh, funding available in Reclaim. Counties get that funding then based upon a calculation of the number of felony adjudications that you have in the county. And it used to be on a rolling five-year average. Now it's on a rolling 10-year average. So the more felony cases you have, the more funding you are eligible to get through Reclaim, the theory being that you have more youth committing those offenses who would otherwise go to DYS, but who do not because you're doing community programming to keep them in the community. And that may be as simple as probation supervision, it may be counseling programs, it may be, in our case, drug and alcohol and mental health treatment programming, uh, it can be a variety of things. When you send a youth to the Department of Youth Services, Every day that youth is at the Department of Youth Services is a bed day. Or if it's a community correctional facility, two-thirds of a bed day. But I'm getting really into the weeds now. <laughs> so essentially, when you have youth who commit felonies, your potential reclaim award goes up because you have more cases, more youth to deal with. When you decide that you are not going to keep those youth in the community, but instead send those youth to the Department of Youth Services for them to provide those services in a locked facility at the state level, then your funding comes down because you've now transferred that responsibility to the state, and so the state's going to keep that funding um, to do it. We send very few youth to 
traditional Department of Youth Services facilities. I think we may have one youth um, in DYS at the moment. You emailed me the list yesterday, so I happen to have just looked at this. But, um, uh, but we send a number of youth every year to what are called community correctional facilities, um, which are smaller. They tend to have 18 or 20 youth total in the facilities, and they're much more treatment and education oriented, although they are still a locked Department of Youth Services facility. Nobody comes and goes uh, when they feel like it. Um, those days count as, again, two-thirds of a bed day for every day that they are there. So um, based upon that, our amount goes up and down. And every year in our budget process, you uh, approve a reclaim award um, for us. I can tell you that um, the, the reclaim is on a, a July 1 to June 30 um, calendar. And so we just started the, the new reclaim period. And for 17-18, um, our award is going to be about 30, what did we say yesterday, 37, 38,000 dollars less than it was last year. And because during the course of this year, we had a number of high-level felony offenders who we sent to CCF facilities because we made a decision that public safety dictated that they be they receive that treatment and education in a secure um, facility. And that's just the ebb and flow of cases. And they, the award goes up and down a little bit every year. Competitive is another pool of money the state has made available. They've said, look, reclaim's working. And we know reclaim's working because in 1995, there were 2,500 kids in DYS. Today, there are 375 kids um, in DYS. And so we know reclaim works. Um, very dramatically, we know reclaim works. Uh, and in order to try and in, even more in, in I have lost my ability to speak English. In order to try and reduce those numbers even more, um, we want to make additional funding available in courts, but now we're going to require you to come in because we don't have enough to just distribute it evenly among the counties. Um, we're going to ask you to come in and show us what you're going to do with it and, and demonstrate to us that our money is going to be well spent, the state legislature is saying this. Uh, and that's what competitive reclaim is. Yeah. And there are actually several different categories of competitive reclaim. Uh, I think you see in the... Um, resolution you have here that this is a, a category two um, competitive reclaim grant that means some things within the amounts and, and uh, uh, grant schedule. Um, but, um, um, but that's what it means. It means that we've had to go up against the other 87 counties in Ohio who are all also making competitive reclaim um, uh, proposals to the state. And for us to go and do that and to come away with close to $300,000 in additional funding for these programs certainly indicates that they had some faith, as we do, that these programs are going to work. And now I have talked much longer than I intended. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you for all, you. all the thank initiative on, on what appears to be a very promising program. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-731. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Resolution number 17-732. In the matter of authorizing the use of a procurement card for the develop, sorry, Delaware County Board of Developmental Disabilities. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Christine Hodge, Superintendent, Delaware County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Um, I'm here before you uh, for the request of a procurement card for our new Public Relations and Communications Coordinator, Ann Miller, who is with me today. Um, Ann started about a month ago, and we have typically had procurement cards for our PR people um, to do a variety of things that need you know, immediate access to funds. Um, and so uh, that is our request. Okay, vote. Vote on motion 17-732. Mr. Bitten? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. <clears throat> Resolution number 17-733. In the matter of approving an intergovernmental co cooperation agreement by and between the Delaware County Board of Developmental Disabilities and the Delaware County Board of Commissioners for Facilities Management and Facilities Maintenance. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning again. I'm just going to stay here for a moment. Um, the agreement before you is a collaboration between the county um, facilities, John Melvin being our partner here, um, and the Delaware County Board of DD for facilities maintenance for our building at 7991 Columbus Pike. This is the second year that we're asking um, you to approve this. We have had this arrangement, and it has been, in my view, um, an exponential success. Uh, we have worked very well uh, with your maintenance department. I have nothing but 
wonderful compliments working with John, um, Sai, who initiated this about a year ago with us, and John's staff. Um, we have saved, as a county board, uh, we used to spend about three to $4,000 a month on our facilities maintenance. Now it's between 1000 and $1,500 a month. Do you have yeah, I ran the totals for uh, John Melvin, Director of Facilities. For last year, we had a total of 400 hours spent down there by our maintenance staff, which to, the cost to uh, DD was $13,184. So we've pretty much cost, uh, reduced our cost by about two-thirds with this agreement. Um, John staff are, are professional. They're knowledgeable. Um, they're responsive and courteous. Uh, I can tell you I see a lot of them, you know, throughout the month, and I have nothing but really wonderful things to say. Our facility is in, is in good shape. We are on schedules now for preventative maintenance, and I, I couldn't be happier with the service. My board also supports this agreement. We've talked at length about the service that we receive, um, the cost savings, and the great collaborative relationship that, that we have. So that that is my request. Sure. And just to know, I mean, we did spend the first year, there was quite a bit of time set up establishing routine maintenance for the various systems down there. So. I would anticipate this cost to actually, the time spent to actually go down in the, in the future. Yeah. This says total compensation, so we're talking about benefits included yes. in that number. Yes. Full benefits. Yeah, uh, again, this is something we've been talking about for some time now to try to leverage the county's staff and expertise to the extent that it helps in an organization like DD or others. And this is a good example of it's, it's working well. So. Glad to see that it is moving forward for another year. Okay, vote. Bill on motion 17-733. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. And I love uh, Superintendent Hodge just for a second, I think, because I don't want to delay you uh, anymore. But could you explain just a little bit about uh, what happened at uh, FCFC yesterday as far as DD? Sure. Sorry, God, and now I'm using all the abbreviations. <laughs> <laughs> Family and children first. Council. Yeah, Committee council. council. Yeah. And yes. We know what DD is. Yeah, we know it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So Commissioner Lewis is speaking about our Family Children First Executive Council meeting, which we had yesterday, and uh, we talked about a decrease in the revenue for Family Children First Council. And what happened was um, there are, are two grants that come through the How Department of Health traditionally for Help Me Grow Services, which is birth to three. One is for service coordination which now actually comes to the Department of Developmental Disabilities. And the second was called, um, you know, a central intake, which is for any family that has a child aged birth to three with high risk or risk of a development, developmental disability. We had a, we were funded through a grant to have staff on hand to take the call, walk the parent through the process, and begin the, the intake and the assessment and the evaluation piece for these children and these families, birth to three. Um, earlier this year, in about March, Ohio Department of Health decided to, to um, send an RFP out, request for proposal, and they encouraged collaboration. So they were saying, you know, we, we want counties to regionalize. So through Family Children First Council, we partnered with Morrow County to say, hey, let's let's do this together. So we put this grant together, as did other county boards and entities throughout the state of Ohio, to be able to continue this the service yet still collaborate with other counties. What we found out about two weeks ago was that the state decided Ohio Department of Health on a statewide entity, it's called Cleveland Site Center, to do central intake coordination for all counties in the state, which in fact, when you look at Delaware County, we funded a position for our families to have that personal service of somebody walking them through that intake process. So um, as a result, our, our Reduction is about $50,000 in our FCFC budget for our revenue. As a result, on the DD side, um, we have some workings to do regarding a, a really great employee that's done amazing service for our families. Um, and we will no longer be doing central intake. So we will receive through a computerized system the family's you know, name and the information about the child, and then we'll have to take that information and go forth a different way. So it's a little bit of a challenge for not just Delaware, but for all the counties in the state. It's a little bit of the cost shifting turned around, so now it's going to go to one entity. We are supposed to get minimal funds for continued outreach, but that, that might be eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000, nowhere near where we were. So it is going to change our process. It does change our funding mechanism, and it um, creates for us 
as a community and the DD board specifically, you know, challenge on how we're going to do this. So um, that's pretty much where we are with that. Mm -hmm. And it does reduce our revenue for the Family Children First Council budget for Delaware. Right. So, so the problem is that we, our families who are coming aboard, lose that personal touch. Right. And we're working right now it's internally. So important. Yeah. And we're really. It's just great regret. And it's it's not just here. It's everywhere. But the person that we have on board at the DCBDD is amazing. She's amazing. She really touches people's lives. She's so good with resources. Uh, really an asset. So right now, I'm actually working with my board and my personnel committee on different options that we could look at in Delaware. Um, but yeah, it, it is. It's, it's just, it's very sad when you see the county flavor and that personal touch that, that we've created now going to a statewide entity to, um, I would assume, they, they, they really believe that it'll save dollars um, because every FCFC would take a chunk for the administrative cost, you know, when once they receive the grant, then say, okay, here you go. Um, we basically used everything for the person doing the function and then for outreach. So, so we're, we're working on it. You know, we're actually meeting tonight to talk about it as a, mm -hmm. as a personnel committee of the board, and then we'll be talking again next Thursday at our, our actual board meeting. And we're working really hard to continue that service and yet figure out a way to do it. Um, Without right. incurring costs that we haven't planned for, right? Boy, I, I hope you can figure out a way to do it. It's it's really too bad. Yeah, it, it's, it's really too bad. it is. It's it's sort of tragic because when you get families and children, you know, first when there's a diagnosis or an issue, that first person they talk to that actually is compassionate, understanding, and knowledgeable, and create those links and that trust. It's just I just think it's valuable that we find a way to continue. Um, to offer that, even if we're not the first person or the first entity on now, that we at our level are able to offer that same level of... So, so now they'll just call a number in Cleveland and then... Well, what the Ohio Department of Health has stated is that that entity, that statewide entity, will have local exchanges. So it would be a 740 exchange. So for Delaware County, the residents would call 740 blah, blah, blah. And they would also have... But it will ring right to Cleveland. It, but it's Cleveland, right. The right. It won't be our state. Right. It won't be right. DCBD, okay. right? Okay. So, and, you. Yeah, and the work of the transition, they extended our grant for one more month. So we have till July 31st to figure out the transition. Okay. So, okay. Thank you yep. for that Thank summary. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Resolution number 17 dash. Sorry. Resolution number 17 dash 734. And the MAV accepting the award for the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction Subsidy Grant. Agreement for the community based correction programs non residential felony. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, for John. Uh, Joe Craig, Chief Probation Officer, Adult Court Services. Um, this is a grant that just goes, it, it was on an annual basis. This year they've actually set it to where it's uh, biannual. So it's, well, it's every other, it's a two year grant. So this will be from uh, fiscal year 18 and 19. So the numbers obviously would be divided in half to cover us for the year. Well, this is a big grant. It is a big grant. So this one we are getting. Um, the 407 covers, uh, part of that covers our pre-sentence investigators, and part of it covers our electronically monitored and our intensive supervision officers. So. Is this the same as previous years? Same as previous years, yeah. Again, the, the amounts doubled because they're, instead of doing annually right. now, they're doing two years, so. Okay. All right. Thank you. So on motion, 17-734. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Resolution number 17-735. In the matter of approving a services agreement with LTC Custom Carpentry for remodeling work and in the concentrator building at the Olentangy Environmental Control Center. So moved. Second. Discussion. Morning, Commissioners. Tiffany Mag with the Regional Sewer District. Uh, what we have here is an agreement for remodeling work that's going to be done at the OECC treatment plant in the concentrator building. What we're trying to do is create this into our spare parts building. Um, it's currently not really in service at all. Um, it hasn't been used for years. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an office on one side of the building. Um, it's going to have a new window, new flooring, and then they're going to clean and paint the entire building so that we're able to have kind of an electronic storage area, an office for someone to work out of, and then storage for all of the spare parts that we need. 
This was in the budget also, and this is significantly less than what we had budgeted because we were able to scale the work back. Okay. Great. Vote. Vote on motion 17-735. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-736. In the matter of approving a facility encroachment agreement between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners and CSX Transportation Incorporated for the Liberty Sawmill Sanitary Sewer Extension Project. So moved. Second. Discussion. So this is actually a very similar agreement that you guys saw on session a couple months ago for this project. <laughs> we actually had to move the sewer about two or 300 feet to the north. And when we did that, we had to update the milepost number in that agreement. So nothing has changed in the entire agreement except for the milepost number, mm -hmm. and we were required to bring it back through session. Okay. I was wondering why we were okay. doing that. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-736. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-737. In the matter of approving a professional services agreement with Arcadis U.S. Incorporated for the engineering and design services for the concrete and pavement repairs at the Delaware County Solid Waste Transfer Station. So moved. Second. Discussion. This agreement is for the design services of um, the new tip floor and then also the truck loading area and a pavement repair plan. Um, they're also going to help out with bidding services, um, some, some minor work there as well. This uh, part of the solid waste transfer station is in significant need of some repairs, and it has been for a few years. I think it's been getting pushed off, and we're at the point where we can't push it off any further. Um, so we're looking for um, this agreement to go through, and then um, the pavement repair itself um, of the main loading area that they're going to be performing this plan for is going to be done by the county engineer's office. Oh, okay. Okay. What kind of timeline? Um, we're going to be proceeding with this design immediately, and then the paving, I believe, would happen um, probably later this fall okay. before yeah. the plants shut down. Okay. Vote. Vote oh, on motion 17-737. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. <clears throat> Resolution number 17-738. In the matter of accepting a permanent sanitary easement from John W. Hill, Jr., trustee of the KSM Enter Vivos Revocable Trust Agreement dated August 8, 1998. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, this is just a standard lot split where we require a 20-foot easement be provided to us for future sanitary service. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-738. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-739, in the matter of accepting a permanent easement from the Board of Township Trustees of Orange Township. So moved. Second. Discussion. This easement is for the, the new North Road um, Orange Park that's going to be built um, for the sewer that's going to be located in that area. They're just dedicating the easement to us. Okay. <clears throat> Vote. Vote on motion 17-739. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 17-740, in the matter of accepting a permanent sanitary easement from Richard R. and Christina A. Lehner. So Second. Discussion. Uh, this is another one of those lot splits where we're requiring the 20-foot easement. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-740. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thanks. Thanks, Tiffany. The next item on the agenda, I will let Director Miller explain. Good morning, Commissioner. Sean Miller, Director, of Delaware County Emergency Management. Uh, we did uh, pull the presentation and discussion today for uh, Commissioner Authorities and Disasters. Uh, I had asked a representative from the Red Cross to come in and speak as well because they are one of our primary partners for uh, sheltering and mass feeding, and that he was unable to attend due to flooding in Franklin County. So that has been pulled for today. That moves us to item number 18, resolution number 17-741, and the matter of approving the amended agreement for countywide emergency management agency. So moved. Second. Discussion. This is something that we've discussed uh, a few times now, but to recap, uh, emergency management is under uh, a board, and uh, our funding has come from a local apportionment as well as federal grants. And to give you an idea of the breakdown, in 16, approximately 55% of our revenue came from federal grants. Uh, the remainder came from local funding. 
And uh, that local funding has historically been a per capita agreement, uh, per capita amount. And for the cities, townships, and villages, it has been uh, 40 cents per capita uh, since 1989. And for the commissioners, it's been 20 cents per capita for our uh, coverage area, which is Delaware County minus Columbus, Dublin, and Westerville. And then also with that, uh, some uh, utilities as well as office space. So it's not just uh, the fiscal coming from the commissioners. So that has been in place since 89. And uh, our executive board has had uh, quite a few discussions on uh, what they want emergency management to look like in Delaware County. What are some of the risks uh, associated with our current model? What are some of the strengths of the office? Those sorts of things. And we did a survey, always probably early last year, and one of the risks that was identified was our heavy reliance on federal grants. And those grants since 9-11 ha had uh, really gone up, but recently we've seen them either stagnate or decrease. And uh, since we last spoke about this subject, I have received some good news in that our main operating grant, which is the Emergency Management Performance Grant, has remained the same for us. Uh, in fiscal year 17 is 16. So that's a tremendous benefit, uh, even if the uh, federal award to the state had remained the same, there was always the possibility that the state could hold on to a little bit more, uh, but they have uh, passed through to the locals or will pass through the same amount, which is very helpful. And the state emergency management is actually taking a hit uh, through the grant because they utilize it as well. So for the locals, that's extremely helpful, and the outlook for 18 as a result for us is better. Uh, but essentially, our board has recognized uh, that this heavy reliance on grants is uh, somewhat of a, a risk for us. And so one of the things that we had discussed and ultimately settled on uh, is a not a fixed per capita amount, but rather a uh, population percentage model. And so if this uh, updated agreement were to go into effect, and it would require a majority of the participating political subdivisions to adopt it for that to happen, and right now I believe we're sitting at 12, so we're getting very close, but if this were to go into effect, it would still require our executive committee every year to approve the budget uh, to include the local portion of that. And so the way that would work is I as director would have to make the argument as far as what we needed for local funding and then they would have to approve it. And then at that point it would go before the commissioners still for appropriation as it always has done. And so, you know, there would still be those two uh, organizations, those two boards looking at this. There are those checks and balances in place. And so any kind of an increase would have oversight by, number one, the EMA Executive Committee, and number two, by the Board of Delaware County Commissioners. So those two things would remain the same. Those would be in place. And the other thing that our board came up with was, you know, under the, the current arrangement, the county commissioners, as I said, has paid, uh, have paid 20 cents per capita with the cities, townships, and villages paying 40 cents per capita. So it's a one-third, two-third split. Uh, we have, uh, in this agreement, kept that ratio of one-thirds, two-thirds. So as a, a theoretical example, uh, and for the sake of easy math, which I'm always a proponent of, uh, if the if this were to go into effect, let's say, and for 18, we were looking at, say, a need of $150,000 for local funding. If the EMA Executive Committee approved it and the uh, Board of Commissioners approved it, for that $150,000, if that were determined to be the local funding, then the Board of Commissioners would still pay the one-third of that, or $50,000, and then the remaining jurisdictions would pay uh, the remaining 100000 and what they paid of that 100000 would be determined by that jurisdiction's population uh, percentage of the overall population. So if Township X had 2% of the overall population, then they would pay 2% of that remaining two-thirds, uh, and so it would be, in this case, $2,000. And, uh, you know, with this, 
this is based uh, in need, and I think that the uh, board, our executive board, sees that. And uh, Commissioner Lewis, feel free to, to add in any comments you may have. But I believe the board is very much of the mindset and has the thought process that local jurisdictions are constantly being asked to do more with less. And that mentality is not lost on them. Uh, that being said, this is the best, uh, I believe, solution to our uh, analysis of our current funding model and the risks posed therein. And so even if this does go into effect, they are going to make me do my homework and prove that any kind of an increase is solely based in need. And I, I believe that our executive committee has that thought process in mind that their jurisdictions, local jurisdictions in general, are being asked to do more and more with less. And so they have that mentality, and they're going to make sure that any kind of an increase is based in need. And so uh, in addition to that, it would, of course, have to come before the Board of Commissioners every year. And uh, for 18, I don't think the need would be quite as much as what we had anticipated previously. Uh, but that being said, you know, I think somewhere in the vicinity of uh, maybe 25 to 27 cents for the Board of Commissioners would be in the realm of, uh, I think that would be a safe number at this point. So if this were to go into effect, I would see, you know, maybe going from that 20 cents to 25 to 27 cents, and it would be, you know, an on average per capita, it wouldn't be a fixed per capita. So I, th I think that those are safe numbers at this point. Obviously, we don't know what health insurance looks like. We don't know what some of the other costs will look like for next year. But we are looking better than what we were when we had uh, conversations previously. And the increase would go to things uh, such as increases in health insurance, uh, as well as uh, maintenance of our existing equipment. So Delaware County has uh, four signs at the Delaware State Park, or two at Delaware State Park, two at Elm Creek State Park as well as we have just uh, obtained uh, ownership of the siren activation system, which uh, we had to uh, have the activation radio uh, you know, worked on. Uh, so there are costs, maintenance costs associated with those systems, as well as uh, upkeep of our emergency operations center, uh, the technology there, which is downstairs in this building. Uh, we have no plans to add uh, any additional full-time staff members you know, at this point in time. This is to maintain where we're at, maintain the equipment, and uh, really keeping pace with a growing county uh, to the best of our ability. And I believe that this is as equitable uh, and efficient of a solution as uh, what we can come up with, essentially. And so uh, with that, I'd be happy to entertain any questions you may have. I have two or three, if I can go ahead. Sure. Uh, the question statement, just for clarification. Sure. So your board is made up of townships and city representatives. So you also have a check and balance that would, representing their particular entities, they have a, they have a desire to manage the cost. So they, yes, sir. that would be a, a word I'm looking for, kind of a stopgap. Or a, a, they're going to be managing it because they're also paying it. Right, absolutely. Uh, the other point I want to make is grants. Uh, the, the one fear I think you, we could have is you get the money through the source. It's less of an effort to seek out grants. Mm -hmm. I think the answer will be that won't be the case, but if, I just want to make that statement. We will still right. be proactively seeking grants, and I'm assuming if we get those grants, if not that year, the next year we'd see a reduction in the cost to kind of offset that. We just wouldn't find a way to spend. Yes, sir. Quite right. And. Uh, well, the point I would like to make uh, to tag on to your points is that this more flexible model is a two-way street, and you were alluding to that. So if we, say, do better one year than anticipated with a particular grant, uh, then the next year we could charge the local jurisdictions a corresponding uh, less amount, uh, whereas currently and previous, you know, it was 40 cents, 40 cents, 40 cents, 20 cents, 20 cents, 20 cents for 
the jurisdictions and the commissioners, and it was what it was. There's no flexibility, and so this is a two-way street. If we do better with grants than we anticipated, we can absolutely charge the local jurisdictions less the next year. Two more points, and I'll be done. Uh, population, how is that determined? Uh, you have your census every 10 years. Obviously, this is a growing county. Yes, population is changing. So is, there, is this the best estimates made, or uh, well, how do you determine that for the formula that you're going to be using? That's a great question. Every year, we have gone off of uh, Delaware County Regional Planning's figures for the preceding year. And so, for example, the invoices that went out in early 17, those were based off of regional planning, uh, regional planning's figures for 2016. So we bill for the preceding year, and they update those projections, I believe, in the fall uh, every year. So those are the figures that we're utilizing. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I support this, definitely. Uh, uh, being on the EMA board, uh, uh, we decided that this new funding model was the, the big thing is the flexibility, much more flexible than, than what is currently in place. And as you explained it well, it can be adjusted then depending upon what the grants yield. So right. and, uh, it's a good idea. I know sometimes uh, there's concern over the term flexibility. But I would say, you know, it's flexibility with checks and balances in place. And so there is going to be, uh, you know, the need for the arguments to be made if there is an increase. And so there will be oversight uh, from two different boards, which I think is an important point to stress. Okay. Thank you for the very good explanations. We'll take a vote. So on motion 17-741, Mr. Bitten. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Little. Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. That brings us to administrative reports. Okay. Good morning. First thing I'd like to report out on is uh, latest figures from the state of Ohio in terms of uh, the child support rankings. And uh, our ranking in the state is number one uh, for March, April, May, and June. Right. And uh, one particular figure that Joyce wanted me to share with you the state average of collections for every dollar that an agency spends, they collect $8.25. Uh, our department collects $18.50. So we're doing a little bit better than the state average. Yeah. So congratulations to yes. our child support yes. department. They're doing yes. a great job. A uh, second thing I wanted to bring to your attention is we recently received notification from the state uh, public defender's office that the state has decided to change the hourly rate for indigent counsel for capital cases. The set rate was 65 to $75 per hour, and it's now going to be $125 per hour, so we'll have to budget for that accordingly. Uh, that's all I have to report on. The third thing I just wanted to mention briefly to you, uh, Don and I were having a conversation not too long ago, and subsequent to that I had a similar conversation with um, Prosecutor Carol O'Brien. Uh, when, um, when a lot of different people are appointed to boards, a lot of these people are veterans of boards. They, they have been on the boards before and they know exactly what's expected, but a lot of people are brand new. And I think we owe them a little bit of help in terms of giving them some, some material on, on, on how a board operates. So I thought that, that instead of pointing them to a website that's got 6,000 pages, I'd hate that if somebody did that to me. I think it would be good uh, to put together a small package and just, just you know, how a board operates and how their particular board operates and uh, which Ohio laws uh, pertain to those boards and so on and so forth and give names of people that they can always reach out to for advice and help. I think that would be a good idea. So your thoughts on that? Yeah. No, I think, it, I think it is a good idea. It would be great. It really makes sense. Yes. Is there any briefing when, when a, um, I guess we're kind of assuming that even a new member knows something about the board they've applied for? Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Jane? I don't, I don't know if... It's, a lot of it depends on the leadership of the board person who's the staff contract. Okay. Some of the boards seem to have very well-organized systems for doing an orientation. Um, I would say not all of them do. Basically, what we have here usually are just sort of bylaws uh -huh. based on state law. We don't have details about the nitty gritty. There's like how often do they meet? What are their expectations? Right. Um, yeah, it would be very good if you could get that out of you know, all the different boards right. and that kind of information. Yeah. 
voice. And if the board would offer an orientation itself about the issues that the board's confronting and then some of the, you know, um, skills that they're looking for, too, in the members. Okay, that's something to think about, though. I think it's going to vary. Uh, if you take the large boards, like the CCO, they do have an orientation. Absolutely. Uh -huh. But the yeah. committee authorities, some of those, so they're really not structured that way. They've, they've been in, they've, they just appeared one day when there's been a resolution passed, and so they don't really have the uh, uh, the background to really do that. So I think what you're talking about will kind of fill that gap. I think it's funny that you bring up the NCA on on one of the NCA boards. I remember the NCA board walking yeah. into one of them, and they said, uh, "Are you Frazan?" I said, "Yes, I'm Frazan." I said, "Well, can you swear?" I said, "Okay." I said, "Have a seat." Oh, by the way, you're the president of the board. I said, "Oh." Oh, wow! Oh my gosh! What am I in? Yeah. So, so the gentleman came to my rescue. He says, "Well, your predecessor used to just pass it to me and say you run it." I said, "You know what? I think you should run it." There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, boy. Good. Yeah, it's a good idea. Good. So they have good. That would be good initiative. Yeah. All right, Commissioner Merrill. Uh, I have three things. Um, I attended Finance Authority Tuesday evening and uh, I swore in our two new members. And, uh, uh, and uh, I think they're both excited about serving. Uh, Morphsey Board meets this afternoon and uh, uh, Jerry Ray from Ogden is supposed to that. speak. Oh, so. Uh, yeah. I think Fazan and I are going to go down, and I don't know yeah, if going. going, so yeah. um, looking forward to that. And uh, and also, just there is an opening of the North Star Community Authority. Uh, I, I realize this is a limited audience will be hearing this, but uh, we need good good people. If somebody has an interest in that, don't be bashful. Uh, call North Jane Hawes or... Uh, North Star? What North Star. North, huh? Yeah, North Star is... So people know what North, no, North Star is the committee authority for the North Star development. And uh, so it's certainly somebody on that side of the county who may have an interest. East of 71. North, north, north of 70. North of 30, 30, 30, 30, yeah, other side of 71. Okay. Um, and uh, Jane can certainly answer any question that he has in here or call, or call one of the commissioners as well. So, uh, And that's all I have. Okay. Commissioner Lewis? Well, there is a ribbon cutting at... 10 a.m. this Friday morning, the Smothers Road Bridge will be open oh, yeah. over Hoover Dam. You're and happy to see that. I am going to be very happy. I'll even give extended remarks if they'll let me. <laughs> now I don't have to go all the way around the dam, whether I'm going. How long has it been closed? East to west. It's been months? closed since February. Okay. Yes, so I'm real glad to. Six months. Yeah. Yes, it's been a long time. There are going to be a lot of happy people on the east side of Hoover when this thing opens. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Okay, I, I'm going to see Morpsey. We're having a financial reporting meeting, I think, this morning yet. Um, that, I'm very interested in that. Obviously, uh, we need to improve our financial reporting, make it more regular, more robust, et cetera. So I'm very excited, and I know Cy and Karen are working on number of things and Verzon has been helping so so very very interested to see that um, let's see the, the, the CAFR is out I think it's been actually published do you want to you know tell people what that is yeah um, it's it's the CAFR um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, si, you probably know what the acronym is there, I knew that. There we go. Okay. I always have to think about it. What do those letters stand for? I always have to yeah. think about it. I'm glad to see you do, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, So anyway, it is kind of the county's annual report. It has, I don't know, 300 pages in it, probably, of statistical detail, financial detail for the different uh, it is agencies, wow. the funding yeah. sources, and so on. So it's it's a... There are some summary pages that are, that are easier to, to read and understand, but it is a very... Comprehensive report that um, Auditor Kites's office puts together, and uh, it's it's very well done. It reflects very well, done. well in the county. It does reflect very well in the county. Yes. Um, so again, compliments to Auditor Kites and his team, and I know Sai, I'm sure, helped in that, and, and others. Public uh, is most ready. It most, I well, I don't know if they're ready, but yeah. it's, they are. <laughs> they want to read it. Yeah, so. it's, it well, is a well, big document, but a very important one. Yes. Um, the Cleveland Indians were well represented in the All-Star game. Um, they had three hits. The, 
out of the American League Center nominee. It's, they had five people on the team, so it was, it was a great year for the Cleveland Indians in the American League All-Star game. Um, I'm not getting a whole lot of interest in that. I don't know. So, uh, okay, I think that's it. We do have need for executive session. Yes, we do. Resolution number 17-742, in the matter of adjourning into executive session for consideration of employment, compensation of a public employee or public official. So move. Okay. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 17-742. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Mayor? Aye. We are in executive session. Can you text me when you're done, then I can come in? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>